it's really easy to download images from your card through Adobe Bridge. So all you're going to do is take your card and plug it into your computer. Most computers today have an SD card slot. If it doesn't, then you're going to have to purchase a, a card reader, an SD card reader, a compact flash card reader, whatever you need to align with whatever camera cards you're currently using. But again, most computers have an SD reader slot in the computer. And once you've pushed your card into the computer, it doesn't click into place. There's no spring. So you're just basically pushing the plastic card into a, a slot and it just stops when it reaches the back end. And once you've done that, at the very top up here, see this camera in the plus icon? It's where you get your photos from your camera. So just click on it and it's gonna ask you, do you want photo downloader to automatically launch whenever a camera or card reader is connected? I don't like to do that. So I choose don't show me this again and no. This way it only launches this downloader whenever I click that camera and plus button up here in the top toolbar. So this is the Adobe Bridge photo downloader and it's real straightforward. Where do you want to get the photos from? So go pre-select your device and even though I only have one card in it's reading it as two separate cards and that's fine. I'll go into more detail about that in some video and in, in an advanced video. So right away it's telling me hey there's only 10 files here and this is how big it is. The location so choose your location. I advise that you always download your images to pictures, always give it a new folder name, name it appropriately. Typically, I mean, you come up with your own deal for whatever it is. If this is a project, name it whatever the name of the course is and then the project number, or maybe just name it the project number if you've already navigated inside your project folder. If these are your personal images, well, what are they? Are they, are they commercial? I'm like, are they for a client? Then you'll save it under your client's name. But either way, come up with a, a, a nomenclature that makes sense moving forward. So now I know where it's going. It's going to pictures and I've named mine delete me so I can delete it and create a subfolder. So now you can also create subfolders. I'm going to leave just the year, month, day automatically chosen, but I can choose a custom name and name it whatever I want to name it. Do you want to rename the files? Generally, it's a good idea to rename the files right now at this point if you know what they are. You know, it could be beach 2022 if these were photographs of your beach vacation that you took in 2022. Or it could be the the Van Helsing wedding 2022, if it was a wedding that you shot. You, you see what I mean? You can kind of do this yourself. Um, and let's go ahead and do that. Let's call this, call it Jackson wedding 2022. And I'll put another underscore because then it's going to name it plus one. And there's going to be sequential numbering over here. Do I want to preserve the current file name in the XMP data? I'm going to say yes, so that that way, if I ever need to link back up to the actual shot, it will save that original file name. Convert to DNG. Here's another thing to consider. And, and actually, let's pop into the advanced dialog box to really understand this. In the advanced dialog box, what do I have? Okay, I do. I, I have JPEG images and I have, I have proprietary raw images that were shot with a Canon camera. The newer cameras... Uh, CR3 is the definition. This particular camera is still CR2. If it's Nikon, it would be NEF. There are so many different proprietary RAW formats that it has been advised, and it's something I do, is I convert all of my proprietary RAW to DNG, and that's what this is for. Convert to DNG, and I just check this. You can click the settings dialog box, and essentially I always go with compressed but lossless preserve raw image. And if you click embed original raw file, it makes the file size so much bigger. And I have never found a, a need for this. The JPEG preview at medium size is totally fine. So those are my settings. I never ever delete original files from a card. I always get rid of those by taking the card after I verified the download has been successful. I put the card back in the camera and I immediately reformat the card and even low format if I have that option depending on the camera. Something to think about. I say convert to DNG and again there's a whole thing about this. It's kind of like PDF. PDF Adobe created. This is universal. They can be read forever. I mean imagine if you have a camera brand that goes bankrupt right? We've had some top 100 companies that don't exist anymore. So what would happen if your camera brand went bankrupt and then Adobe quits supporting and updating the reading of the file? You wouldn't be able to see your old raw files anymore like 10 years from now or eight years from now or even two years from now. 
by converting them to D and G, you still keep all of the original raw stuff, the good stuff, like where it's literally every single raw pixel without any computational data being applied to it in the camera. I think it's a wonderful practice. I've been doing it for years. I recommend you start doing it or do your research to figure out why you're not doing it because you should be doing it. When you check convert to DNG, it's only going to convert to DNG whatever it finds as a raw file. If there were JPEGs or MP4s or MOVs, if there are any other file other than some type of raw file, it's not going to touch them. The JPEGs will still come over as JPEGs. MP4s will still come over as the same. Now, save copies too. If you're not doing this, you really got to consider when you download your cards, you download them twice at the same time once to your live computer because you're actively about to work on them, and once to a backup hard drive. Hard drives are so inexpensive now, and you should definitely essentially carry around an external hard drive with you at all times, just like you, if you're carrying around a laptop. They're very affordable, and there's nothing worse than when you lose every single thing you own but when your laptop gets stolen or broken. But the, the real big issue is you're just clogging up your computer and making it work slower and slower and slower. And there's no reason to do that. If you're not actively working on stuff, if you finish working on stuff, move it to a backup hard drive. Let's talk about backup hard drives for just a quick second. I think you should have a working backup hard drive. Carry it with you all the time with your computer. If you have that, you would toggle on save copies and you would choose and you would go over to like one of your external hard drives and toggle, toggle that on. Basic metadata. So I just refreshed everything in Bridge so I don't have any of my metadata templates here anymore. So you also will see the same thing, none and basic. So this is where you write your name. On ingest, type all rights. If you're on a Mac, hit option G for the copyright symbol, 2022, type whatever year it is, and then type your name. Oh, and if you have a Windows machine, just Google what you type for that copyright symbol. It's a longer, it's a bit longer numeric code to get that symbol. So now every image that I ingest, I've got 10 files. It could be 100, it could be 1,000, it could be 10,000. It all depends on how big my memory card was. It's going to ingest those, put them in the folder, put it on the backup hard drive, and copyright, embed the copyright in the metadata of every single image. And I just click get media and this is it. It just does it automatically. And remember I put that delete me folder in my pictures folder. That means it's done. So let's toggle back over. Here's my delete me folder. So notice it created two subfolders based on the date because evidently I shot on two separate days. And these are all DNGs and these are all JPEGs and that's it. That's all you've got to verify. The photo downloader is still here, so I'm just going to cancel that out. And that's all you have to do. If you're on a Mac, you need to grab the card icon and pull it to the trash bin, which will automatically turn to an eject button. And then you just pull the card out. And that's how simple it is to get your images in quickly, adding your copyright information with Adobe Bridge. Hey, if you like this video, it helps. You can help me. Smack it, whack it, and crack a lack it. Take care. I like subscribers. That's awesome. <laughs> Whoa! Yes! <laughs> god. Oh my god, I did! This is hey, you stayed to the end. You know what that means. You're awesome. I'm talking about you. Now get out of here.